Good morning, y'all. Welcome to Honeycrock Homestead. My name is Elise. Um, okay, so today is Wednesday, um, March 30th. We've got a whole bunch of stuff we need to do in the kitchen today. Um, I've had lentil soaking uh, for the last 24 hours so I can make beef stew. And then I've had red beans soaking again for the last 24 hours so I can make some red beans and rice. We are going to do a bunch of prep cooking today and put those away. Um, I basically, I like to make ready-made meals so that I can just pop them in the freezer and then pop them out whenever we need them. Um, you know, it's just a little quick warm-up or if you take it out the night before, you know, to, to thaw. So let me take these dogs back to the house and get started with our day. <laughs>
club turned into a clown and over our beef stew going in these two crock pots and then this is the ground beef half of this is going to be for our spaghetti and then the other half is going to be for our red beans and rice and then we haven't cooked up the um we haven't cooked up the pork sausage yet because i'm still waiting for two of them to thaw really shiloh get down Get down, Shiloh. Thank you. Um, we haven't cooked up the pork sausage yet because I'm waiting on two of them to thaw. I've got two of them thawed already, but it's what it is. I forgot to thaw four. I forgot I was making a double batch. We're making the um, we're making the beef stew, and we're making spaghetti. And we've got everything. Um, I'm waiting on my husband to get home so I can finish. I've got my this is for the red beans and rice. Showing you on my whole house. Uh, this is for the red beans and rice. This is for the spaghetti. Um, it's garlic, uh, bell peppers, and garlic, bell peppers, and two onions. And that's one bell pepper, a couple cloves of garlic, and one onion and what's funny is i'm prep cooking all this stuff and we're not even going to be able to eat any of it tonight because it's getting a little bit late but we are gonna i thought some spaghetti out so we're gonna eat the last portion of spaghetti from our last freezer meal and i'm making more tonight so it worked out forgot to get the celery so I had to um, let everything cool down and put it away um, let it you know sit in the fridge overnight and now this morning we're gonna go ahead and get our red beans back on the stove um, 
we finished browning all of our meat for our red beans and rice and for our spaghetti. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get both of those things on the stove and finish our cooking today. Sometimes it happens where you don't get it all done in one day and it is what it is. Uh, thank y'all for hanging out with me. So guess who forgot to push the start button on the dishwasher last night? Yeah. It's a day, y'all. Well, let's get it done. completely forgot I did this. I put a few cherry seeds um, from some really good black cherries that I got from Aldi. I put a couple of them to soak to get all the goo off, you know, the flesh that's left after you finish eating them. I completely forgot they were in there, but I just rinsed them off. I'm about to dry them off and then um, I'm going to let them sit out to really dry so that when I put them in a little Ziploc baggie to save, they won't put a whole bunch of moisture in the bag and then germinate because we don't want them to germinate before we're ready to plant them. So. sausage and the ground beef that we're going to use for our spaghetti and for our red beans and rice. And let's move these out of the way. This is going in the red beans. This is bell peppers, two bell peppers, two onions, um, about eight cloves of garlic, and I'm chopping up five stalks of celery to put in there now. The celery is what we were waiting on last night.
Yes or no? Okay. Was it good? They'll eat anything that drops. They will eat anything that drops off of this countertop and be happy for it, y'all. All right, y'all. So just put about a half a stick of salted butter in the in the pot um, as soon as that comes up to temperature and melts we're gonna go ahead and put this celery onion bell pepper and garlic in there and let it wilt down now you want to make sure you're only putting it on like medium low heat um, because if you put it on too high they won't they won't wilt down no more like caramelize and burn and that's not really what we want for for this we don't want caramelization we don't want it to burn we just want to soften the vegetables so these are ready for that all right this is the pork sausage that we cooked up last night we're going to put half of it in here and yes i know this is technically dirty from the stuff from the vegetables i just poured out but i'm about to cook this with those vegetables anyway it's all going to get cooked together i'm not going to dirty another dish just to portion out this sausage now we haven't started cooking down the other one so i don't have a an already dirty bowl to put this in so i'm just gonna i have to dirty another bowl to put this one in You know what, this is the sausage, that's the ground beef. I got that backwards. It just has all the spices and stuff in it.
more, you know, if it needs a little bit more salt or a little bit more pepper, or a little bit more, a little bit more heat, you know, we'll see how it tastes at the end. But right now, this is at the stage where we're going to bring it to a boil. And then after it's boiling, turn it down to low and let it simmer for about two hours. Now, if we had finished it yesterday, it would have already been at a boil after we cooked the beans for about 30 minutes. But we didn't have celery and it was late and the Piggly Wiggly was closed and we live about 20, almost 25 minutes from every other grocery store. We couldn't get it last night, so we put everything away and now we're doing it this morning. Ew, and this one's coming up to boil already. I know this one's a smaller pot. I think I'm going to order another one that's this size. But these things were kind of expensive. Like, I usually get my stuff from the thrift store. But I honestly, I wanted to get new enamel pots because um, the old... The old pots that we had were starting to get rust spots on the bottom and burn spots on the bottom and everything I was cooking was tasting like burnt because everything would burn so quick. And I had had those basically since we got here. I found them at a thrift store. Um, no, even before we got here, I found them at a thrift store. I decided to get really good cooking utensils and things that would last or that hopefully will last a long time. And these all had like five star reviews. So, oh this one isn't on I'm sitting here talking to y'all and I haven't turned this one on it, that's why it's not up to boil and this one almost is okay look at that it hasn't even come to a boil yet yes let this come to a boil then turn it down and let it cook for about two hours. Um, I'll make sure I put a timer on that because y'all, I will forget. While we're waiting for this to come to a boil, I'm gonna go ahead and um, empty the dishwasher and load it again. Because on days like this, I really, I don't wanna wash dishes five times a day. I only wash the things that have to be washed by hand. Everything else goes in the dishwasher and I'll just run that a couple of times. Make your life easier, y'all. If you can, if you got a dishwasher, Apparently, it uses less water too, so than washing by hand. Was well, not done. It's not done. Dogs are going to be happy. They get this piece of bacon. Oh, they love prep cooking bacon. They get all sorts of stuff. Y'all should see Sherry look over here looking. Santa sit. Santa sit. Santa sit. Excuse you. And my babies. My babies get good stuff on prep cooking day. So I think what I'm going to do from now on um, is the day before I'm going to, uh, day one I'm going to brown all the meat, chop up all the vegetables, and put the beans to soak overnight. Um, I like to let mine soak, some people say like 12 to 14 hours, I like to let mine soak 24 hours, just that's how long we let our beans soak. Um, so. After, I think I'm going to go ahead and let it do all the prepping, the browning of the meat, the soaking of the beans, and the chopping of all the vegetables. I'm going to do that the day before. And then do the actual cooking and making, putting together the freezer meals on day two. But I don't know, y'all. I don't know. We'll see.
y'all. So it's been a couple of hours. Um, we are we are making our well, we're about to put on our vegetables for our spaghetti um, and go ahead and ladle our red beans and rice, um, which we let cool just a little bit so that it's not too hot to handle when we put it in the jars. Um, so we're going to put this in our jars over there. We've already put our beef stew. We've already put our beef stew in the freezer. So let's go ahead and get this done. Get this on the stove. Okay, so I ran out of storage space um, yesterday when I was doing my freezer meals. Um, we ended up making two pot pies. I've still got to make the crust for the third one. Go ahead and make that. Um, but we ended up making two pot pies. Um, we ended up with five quart jars of beef stew. Um, beef stew is yummy. Um, but we actually ate one of those and then we ended up with 12 jars of beans and rice and then one jar of spaghetti? No, we had six jars seven jars of spaghetti. So we ended up with quite a few freezer meals um, I guess I can show you all in my deep freezer uh, Where they all ended up All right, y'all so I said I was gonna show you guys the finished freezer meals so these are the pot pies and there are three of the pot pies in here in the freezer and then here's the spaghetti and we've got seven of these spaghetti quarts and then the red beans and we've got 12 of these and then this is the box that the canning jars came in. Um, and under there is the rest of the red beans and then the beef stew that we canned. Um, we didn't can it. We just put it in a jar and froze it. But anyway, thank y'all for hanging out with me on this kind of disjointed freezer meal journey. Get back down in there. Y'all have a blessed day.